Uh, let me tell you, the devil been busy today. Everything that could have gone wrong this morning at the 8 o'clock service did go wrong. Did y'all see how crooked that projector was? Our whole system crashed right in the middle of the 8 o'clock service, but that's all right. We ain't going to let the devil win on that one. I just want y'all to know we know it's crooked. <laughs> have you ever gone into somebody's house and that picture, that family portrait is like that, and you want to say, is it me or is it? <laughs> no, we'll get all that fixed by next week if the Lord uh, says the same. Amen? And let's celebrate all our staff. They have been running like crazy today. <laughs> Nothing worked. Nothing worked this morning, but that's all right. We're still here and we're live. All right. So um, um, this month, we've been doing something a little different. We've allowed for those who are visiting, thank God for all you visiting with us and all of those who are watching online, we praise God for you uh, being with us on today. Uh, this whole month, we've been doing something a little different. People send in questions, send in uh, questions th through our app, and uh, we entitled this month, What's on Your Mind? So each week, we've been answering questions. Uh, that have been submitted in to the best of our ability to uh, be where you are. Sometimes you can be at a church for 100 years and it doesn't hit you. Maybe it's because uh, what's talked about is not your issue at that moment. Uh, so this month we've tried to be diligent by being open, transparent, and allow you to make uh, what you want to hear the sermon about. I am thrilled we have done uh, this this whole month and had a great time in the Lord. I hope you've been blessed by it. Uh, and next month, I am thrilled. What we're going to do is every Sunday during the preaching time, we're going to have interviews uh, with different people in different aspects of life. We're going to have a married couple's interview with an older couple, middle-aged couple, and young couple, and just ask them simple questions. What What is it like where you are in your stage right now? How y'all deal with money? How y'all raise the children? How y'all staying together? Y'all ain't going to help me here. So each Sunday, we're going to have a different subject. One will be a married couples the first Sunday. The second Sunday will be singles. Uh, uh, how is the single life working? How does that work? Uh, senior citizens will be the fourth Sunday. And then on the fifth Sunday, we're going to have a millennial round table. We're going to have two millennials who go to church and two millennials who don't go to church. And we just going to open up. How is that working for you? What what? What's the reason you don't go to church? Why do you go to church? We're just going to be open and transparent, and we're not going to censor the statements. We want to hear what's on people's mind and be transparent as we possibly can. Because if they can't say it in here, they sure enough will say it out there. Uh, so we want to be uh, healthy in our approach towards ministry. Amen? All right. First of all, are y'all awake? Amen? All right. So today the question that came in... Um, is this. What does the Bible say is the Holy Spirit's place in our lives? How can we make room for the Holy Spirit individually and as a congregation or community in our lives? That's a very good question. Y'all don't look at this projector. Look at this one. Uh, what does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit's place and position in our lives? How can we make room for it? spiritually, individually, and as a congregation? That's a good question, isn't it? All right, so here it is. Let me, let me talk about it for a second before we get into the, the Word of God. Many of us get confused on what the Holy Spirit is because we only see signs of the Holy Spirit when we come to church. Okay, it got quiet at 8 o'clock, but I'm going to preach it anyway. I wore a suit today, so I'm going to preach. Next week, I'll be back in blue jeans. Okay, so catch this. If the only time the Holy Spirit works for you when you're at church, I would suggest that ain't the Holy Spirit. That's your emotions. Now, now let, me, let me say something to you. I, I'm not getting into the argument about uh, Pentecostal and, and Protestant mainstream religion, but let me say this to you. A lot of times, we only say we have the Holy Spirit when we are doing something somebody else can't do. And people attribute that to speaking in tongues, healing, or getting uh, emotionally out of control in worship. 
normally those charismatic um, uh, services, first of all, they are long in intent so that the Holy Spirit can move. Many of you go to church here because you can be the IHOP before they let out. Y'all not going to pray with me for a while? Let me say this to you. Let me say this. I really want even our kids to get this. I want y'all to listen real good. I'm not going to be here long. That every born believe, believer, born again believer, has the Holy Spirit. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you accepted him in baptism. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me explain what the gift of the Holy Spirit. And many of us don't like to talk about the Holy Spirit because when we grew up, it wasn't called the Holy Spirit. It was called the Holy Ghost. And our forefathers would speak, today I'm going to talk about the Holy Ghost. And I remember being at church about nine years old, and I said that deep, and I said, we're going to talk about ghosts. This religion stuff ain't for me. Peace. I'll catch you at the crossroads because as we make it mystical, but actually what the Holy Spirit is, is God depositing in you and I a spiritual GPS system. Y'all know what that is? Let me, let me help you if you, if you don't because you, you've only seen that the only way you got Holy Spirit, if you can speak in tongues or if you can heal somebody or you can roll around in church. Let me tell you when the Holy Spirit works. You know when you're not supposed to be doing something? And something says to you, no, oh, y'all ain't going to help me here. You ain't supposed to be over here. You ain't supposed to be doing that. You know when you're about to pick up the phone and tell somebody, you, your mama, and your grandmama, come on, somebody, and some tells you that is not audibly speaking, Paul, don't. Let me let you know, you have the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the, here's the problem with, the question, beautiful question, beautiful question. If the only time the Holy Spirit works is when I'm with Brother Andrews at church, we got a problem. I need the Holy Spirit to work. Not just at church, I need it when I leave church. Now all through scripture, all through scripture, uh, it's hard to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I could do a six week series on the Holy Spirit and I'm not demeaning anybody's religion. I'm not downing. And people come here sometimes and say, I love the service. I love y'all's praise team. But I need something where people speak in tongues and all this stuff. And I don't down them. I don't. I just say, hey, I'm having trouble with the English language. I'm not going to try to add one that I can't really deal with. I, I, like, I would prefer getting an understanding. I'm not going to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 11 through 14, but the simplicity of God's word gets you emotional when you find out what the Lord has done for you. Okay, hold on, hold on. I want y'all, because this is Bible class. So in Acts chapter 1, we see what the Holy Spirit does. In Acts chapter 1, the Holy Spirit does something for us. It, it comes down to announce who it is. It sends its presence upon the people of God, the apostles. In fact, what happens to us is uh, when Jesus ascended up, he said, why y'all sitting here looking at me? I'm about to send you the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1, they get announced what they're going to receive. In Acts chapter 2, something amazing happens. They receive the promise of the Holy Spirit because y'all remember in Acts chapter 2, these people, these 120 people are in the upper room and cloven tongues, these fires that look like tongues, come over their head. Y'all remember that? I said, if you like sci-fi, you ought to read Acts chapter 2. It is cool, man. Uh, so these, these fires, these little lamps come over their head, and the Bible says immediately they were able to speak in unknown tongues. That simply means they were able to speak a language that was not there. They didn't do that online course on how to speak a language. They didn't download it. Immediately they received a gift because when Peter preached, each of the apostles were able to speak out what he preached in every language that showed up. Okay, that's church time. But that ain't really when the Holy Spirit shows itself. The Holy Spirit really shows itself in Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are walking out, headed into the temple at 3 o'clock for the time of worship. And they show 
without what they received within. Now, let me explain why many of us are not, are not uh, saying anything right now. Let me, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that I did as long as I could. Uh, the problem is that many of us struggle with the theology problem of what's called docetism. Docetism is the idea that when Jesus was born to the time he got on the cross, some kind of way, Jesus removed himself from being God. And all they were able to crucify was his flesh. It is the theology or it's the ideology that we have the ability to separate spirit and flesh. We have the ability to be spiritual fully and fleshly fully. And God is cool with both of them. Okay, I'm, I'm about to come where you are. Now, you probably never heard of docetism. But many of us live out docetism because we're holy on Sunday and we're hellish on Monday. It's actually picking up God when you need him and putting him on the back burner when everything's going well. It's, it's asking for him to show up at your doctor's appointment, but after you get a good bill of health, you never turn around and say thank you. It's, it's him asking you to... Uh, is you asking him to show up at the courtroom during the divorce, but never saying, Lord, I don't know how I made it. And we pick up and drop off our spirituality. But my Bible says that there's a wrestle going on between spirit and flesh consistently. I know that's true because the Apostle Paul says, when I want to do right, that fleshly nature runs up inside of me and there's a war going on. He said, man, I'm a senile crazy man. Because I want to do good, but that fleshly nature just shows up. And I think we all deal with that because you can tell growth in you and I because we sometimes still do what we've always done, but at least now you feel guilty about it. Oh, I wish I had a church. Let me, let me, let me try this side because this side right here is waiting on the rapture. Let me try this. That, that you, you might still be going off, but at least... The next day, you say, I got to do better. You, you remember the time when you would cut somebody out and pick up the phone, call your homegirl, and say, I told her, and not feel anything about it. But now that God is working on you, there's a battle going on in you that next time you want to do better, you used to do a whole case. Now you're just down to six. You, you used to puff, puff, pass. Now you just puff. It's getting it's getting better, it's getting better, it's getting better. If this ain't real ministry for you, it's getting. I had just said this morning, I said, I'm going to do better. I'm going to watch my tongue. I'm going to bridle my tongue. I'm going to control my tongue. And the lights went off. The system stopped working. I couldn't pull up my sermon on the Internet. I was frustrated, and I closed the door. And at this time, I'm growing. I didn't say it. I just thought it. <laughs> I'm growing. Y'all not going to pray with me? Now, for you who are perfect, this is a miserable church for you because you got a lot of recovering folks in here. Your recovery might not be my recovery, but we all asking the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide. Hey. All right, all right, all right. Hear this, hear this, hear this. So, hear this. If you stop at Acts 1 and 2, you only get the Holy Spirit at church. But in Acts 3... Let me give it to you. Uh, Peter and John, I love that. I love that the Bible is so intentional. Ryan sings that song all the time. He's intentional. I want you to tell you why he's intentional. Because for some reason, he didn't, the Bible didn't say two apostles. It said Peter and John. And let me tell you why it says that. Because those were the two opposite folks walking together. I mean, John would come to the acapella service. Peter Come at 10 o'clock. I mean, John would be quiet, meek, mild. Peter liked to shout. And here the Bible said they were going together into the time of worship. And they run up on this guy in Acts chapter 3 that the Bible says was lame from birth. Y'all know the story. Have y'all heard the story? Pull up Acts 3, 4. Uh, lame, don't look at that one. Look at this, Acts chapter 
because that one's going to drive me crazy. We're going to have that fixed by today. <laughs> Peter and John went, y'all don't have to stand up. I just want, I want to talk it out. Uh, went to the temple in the afternoon uh, for the time of prayer. Uh, verse number two, look what it says. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate. And it tells you which gate he was brought to, the uh, gate called Beautiful. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. Catch this. Now already, we can look at this brother with a judgmental eye. But let me tell you who he is. It's the brother that stands at the red light. That you pray the light don't turn red. And then you act like you on the phone. You ain't talking to nobody. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to get eye contact. Y'all not going to help me here. Some of y'all not going to be real. That you do your best to start piddling in the side or doing something so you can ignore that lame man. But I want you to catch the situation. This lame man didn't just get that way. He was born that way. Everybody that are in bad predicaments didn't make bad decisions to get there. Socially, some people were born there. Okay, y'all not going to have church. How dare you and I, who've been blessed to be born in healthy families, look down our sarcastic religious noses at people who just had to deal with the rough side of town, and they are stuck in a system that have taught them oppression than being rescued. It, they are taught how that welfare is better than working. They are taught that it's difficult when you have struggled in life and you didn't get the breaks that other people got. You have no right to look down at the brother who's standing at the corner who didn't have parents that could pay for him to go to college. His college was learning how to sell a dime bag. Because that's the only way the family was going to eat. And I tell you how society works. Now it's legal in some states what used to be criminal. And some of us are caught up with 20-year sentences for stuff now that you get paid for in Colorado. Y'all not going to pray with me for a while? And sometimes in the situation that you can make a decision that's not in your favor and now you are struggling because they won't give you a second chance. It's hard enough getting a job by itself. It's even more difficult when you got a mark on your record. So catch this, catch this. This brother was born like this. And Peter and John are going in to the hour of worship or the hour of prayer. And they start talking to him. And they asked him, as he's asking for alms, they say, look at us. Now, I think it's intentional where he was laying. Because there were many gates that led to the temple. Okay? There were a lot of gates that would lead. See, the temple was more than just worship. It was the place to transfer uh, commerce. It was a place to buy and sell. It was the Mecca. It was the center of the hub of the financial market. They, you could go buy products on the other side of the temple. You could buy turtle dove. You could uh, exchange land right there at the temple. But if you were going through the gate called Beautiful, that gate was a sign for you to go to worship. The brother, even though he was lame, he had good sense. Because he said, if y'all going to bring me here, let me off at the beautiful gate. Why, brother? I asked him because he said, I know folks who are going in for church and coming out of church won't treat me. Okay. I know people who are showing up for the hour of worship can't go in and pray. And come out and treat me. I, I know there's no way if I get dropped off at Polk Street and Pentagon. That there's no way they're going to come in and raise their holy hands. But not put in their hands to help somebody who needs arms. I, I know it's no way. 
They're going to go in the grandest by themselves and see me out here struggling, see me out here hustling, and not bring out an extra chicken fried steak dinner to help a brother who needs all. Um, I know there's no way for them to go in and get the Holy Spirit and come out and don't show the Holy Spirit. And I wonder how many times do we come in here to worship, but we don't go out there to show it. Because look what Peter and John says to him. Peter and John, they say to him, we ain't got no money. Don't send me an email saying that's incorrect. Y'all understood what I was saying. We ain't got no money. Look what they say. They say silver and gold. Have we none? But what we got, I want to give to you. Y'all missed it. We ain't got no money. But I sure want to share with you what I just got. I, I, I don't have any coins to break you off because if, even if I gave you coins, you'll still be stuck here tomorrow. But I'll tell you what I got. I want to share with you. Peter and John, what do you have? They extended out to him what they had received in Acts 2. And the Bible says, when they put their hand out to touch him, all of a sudden the strength came back in his legs. And he stood up. I want you to catch this. The Holy Spirit, if it only moves inside of the sanctuary and never moves outside in the city, it's not the Holy Spirit, it's your spirit. Now, now I want you to catch this. I want y'all to listen very carefully. I'm not just talking about the brother. No, we experienced that. Our church is situated at the gate called Beautiful. I mean, I'm, we're not walking oblivious and blind to the reality that there are some hustlers out there. And the reason you know what a hustler is because you used to be. Game recognizes. Uh, got a guy came up here the other day. Uh, bro, Block, I was trying to call you to get you up here as quick as possible. He came up here once a week, and I gave him some money to get an all-day pass. And then he came up here about a week later. Same story. Same story. And the third time, because we got kids coming in and out, and we got parents coming in. And I told some parents were coming out, because I didn't want them to see pastor acting like this. So I told them, y'all go to the back. Let me deal with this. So I closed the door. And I went outside. I said, now, y'all not going to help me here. Let me try. I'm not going to say everything that I said because we on television. Uh, but you fill in the blanks. Didn't I see you, you know, about a week ago? And I said, hey, player, you ain't going to gank me again. Because I recognize what you're doing. I said, and if you really want to tighten up your game, at least come back with a different story. And he kind of sobered up for about five seconds, and I said, he looked at me surprised, and I said, man, because hustle recognizes hustle. He said, you the pastor here? I said, yes, sir. He said, this is a real church, man. This is a real church. <laughs> and we ain't seen him again. Because, hold on, hold on. I want to give you something. But it's some folks that you sit at the cubicle with that you know need your Holy Spirit. It's some folks that live next door to you that you know need some of the Holy Spirit that God has given you. It's some folks in your family that need you to show that you've been to church, that you have been redeemed, and you have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. But if I only show it in here, do I really have it? Because what, what, what am I talking about showing? Well, John chapter 16, John chapter 16, verse number 12 says this. John chapter 16, verse number 12 says this. It says, there is so much more I want to tell you. This is Jesus talking. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it right now. He says, when the Spirit comes, everybody say the Spirit. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit, listen, listen to what the Spirit is. It's the Spirit of truth comes. Look what he'll do. He'll do four things. He'll guide you into truth. He will 
not talk about himself, but he'll tell you what he heard. He will tell you about the future, and he will glorify my name. Okay, let me give that to you again. It's very important for you to catch this because many of us discount the Holy Spirit because we're not giving the Holy Spirit anything to work off of. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will confirm truth. What is truth? Truth is the word of God. I don't care how much you don't like it, the word of God is still true. Now, if you ain't putting truth in you, I want to ask you, what does the Holy Spirit have to work with? Okay, let me give it to you another one. Yesterday, I was trying to go to a party, um, and on the way to the party, Blake and I were in the car, and uh, I couldn't find the location. I put it in my map on my little phone thing, GPS system, and it knew my location, but every time I would put in its location, I would end up at the wrong spot, and nobody was at that party because that building was empty. But I found out something. It was, the, the address was 210 Lions Drive, but I was spelling Lions, L-Y-O-N, instead of L-I-O-N. When I caught my error and I put in the correct address, then the system had truth to work off of and to could get me to my location. Here's the problem. What are you giving the spirit? And maybe you keep ending up at a dead end road because you keep putting in bad addresses. Maybe the information you're putting in, see you can't, you can't watch the news all day and that be your truth. You can't listen to your homegirl all day and that's your truth. You can't even listen to yourself and know that's the truth. You got to find something that has been wrought, that has been bedded, because this world will pass away, but my word of God will last forever. So don't blame the system, blame the information. And the Holy Spirit can only work off of the truth you provide for it. Now, the more truth you are able to digest, the more the Spirit directs. Y'all catch that? I want you to read all John 1 through 16. It's a beautiful text. But these four, so it says, first of all, it says, Yo, the truth does four things. I want you to get this and I'll let you go. First of all, it guides. He guides. Now, you got to want to be led to be guided. And you can't pick it up just when you lost. He speaks for God. He tells the future. What do you mean by telling the future? You mean I can prophesy and I can, no. What it's actually suggesting is it's saying that if you provide these elements, the prediction of the future would fulfill itself because of what you've implied now. Okay, let me give it to you another way. Uh, every, every night I do my best without fail to go pray over my child. I say, Lord, don't let. This, this, this. I ain't going to tell you what my prayer. Don't let these things happen. So I'm asking for your spirit to direct him. Because sometimes it ain't what he did. It's what those demons around him. One of my good friends, one of my good friends killed two people at the Oklahoma OU game. Uh, back in 93, a year after we got out of high school. Phenomenal football player. And what happened one day when we were at lunch, sitting at the table, he left his drink down. Somebody put something in it. And he was never the same. And right now, he's on death row. Not because of just what he did, because somebody dropped something in that Dr. Pepper. And you ask God not just to protect what you might do, Sometimes you ask God to protect those evil forces that might come around you to deflect because God has a plan for your life, but the devil also has a plan. The, the devil don't like to party by himself. He wants as many as he can get. So what he does is he finds out God's plan and trying to throw a wrinkle in God's plan to get you on his side. 
So we need the Spirit to guide us, and we need the Spirit to lead us. Now, here's the important thing. In guiding, speaking for yourself, and telling the future, the only reason the Spirit gives you this is so you can give him the glory. If you want to give yourself the glory, that ain't the Spirit. That when all this comes about and you make it through, you can't say, look what I've done. Oh, let me give you another one. You can't have him working for you and then you come out and said it was my education. Uh, yesterday, I put in a sink at my house. I mean, I took out the old sink, and I put the new uh, the sink was leaking. Been in the house for some years. So I was trying to do it myself, trying to show Blake. I'm a classic man, you know. Got up under that. So, but I did it when my wife wasn't there because I didn't need a lot of questions. I didn't need a lot of. So when, by the time she got back home, surprisingly, I had it done. I surprised myself because I had to repipe the, uh, uh, the uh, garbage disposal and all that stuff and uh, got it done. And, you know, when the water came on, I couldn't believe it myself. I said, man. But in between, every time I couldn't figure out something, I would call Deacon Sneed and say, how are you? And he said, you need to go to Home Depot. They got this little thing on aisle 27. You know somebody been to Home Depot a lot when they give you, when they give you the aisle numbers, 27. Go ask James. James will take you right, you know. <laughs> and I said, do you know Dickens Knee? Yeah, man, come on, you know. So I had to go back up there three or four times. But he walked me through the whole thing. And when I came, when I, my wife finally got home, she couldn't believe it. She said, no. I said, try your hot water, try your cold water. You want room temperature? But I, the lies started bothering me. And I said, the reason I was able to do it, it was somebody who wasn't here that walked me through every step. You can't see them, but the results of what you got is because I had a voice in my ear that was directing my step. Come on, somebody, you know, you, you don't have to admit it. You can sit here and every Sunday with your hand behind your Deuteronomy Maximus, but you know good and well had it not been for God directing your step. If you know there was a voice in your ear telling you, show me the way, you wouldn't be here today. And it's amazing to me, it's amazing to me that this dude who was healed after he got his new legs, couldn't stop jumping. In fact, the Bible says that he went into the temple leaping and rejoicing. If you keep reading past verse number 11, the priest tried to tell him, cut all that out. But his legs wouldn't stop. Y'all missing it. He, he couldn't keep his feet on the ground because of what God had just done. And it's amazing to me that we can come here every Sunday and some of us never move. And maybe it's because your healing took place a long time ago and you forgot about when you used to be at the gate. Yeah, your story might not be a, be a paralytic, but your story might be you were on drugs, you uh, 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 giving your body away, uh, doing all sorts of things, and now God has rested you, has brought you into his peace, and now you ought to every now and then stand up and say, it was a voice inside of me that helped me to get through what I was. And if the only, only time the Holy Spirit works on you is when you at church, I need something to guide me when I'm lost. I need something to guide me when I'm de depressed. I need something to guide me when I can't get right. And it's his spirit that we want with us to help us in everything we do. Amen? All right, so this week, this week,
we want to uh, remember that every Sunday we've dealt with different subjects and matters. Now, some of them uh, I couldn't get to, and they were not subjects I could deal with in a sermon format. Okay, you can't just preach everything. But I want to try to clean up my email bag real quick uh, and answer some of these questions. So look at the takeaways. Uh, the first takeaway I'm going to try to deal with real quick. It won't take me but a second. It says in Luke, God came to save the Jews and the Gentiles. Which one are we? Consider. Good question. Um, in this question out of the book of Luke, everybody who's not a Jew is identified as a Gentile. Through birth, okay? Uh, in fact, you find the best picture of that in Ephesians chapter 3 and Ephesians chapter 4 because one of the strains in the text is that the Bible keeps repeatedly saying there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The reason it says that in Ephesians chapter 4 is off a response of Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 says there's no more Jew nor Gentile. Uh, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And the strain of the text was simply saying that we all are going to have to worship together. So I can't judge you because of what you used to be. Because now we are in Christ, we are all the same. So if you're not a Jew, only black Jew I knew was Sammy Davis Jr. We are all Gentiles. Amen. All right, number two. Here's the next one I want. Uh, what does the Bible say about women praying audibly in the church house? Good question. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 5. Uh, get, Carolyn, can you give me that for a second? Let me read it to you real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 5, the Bible says, But a woman dishonors her head if she prays or prophesies without a covering on her head, for this is the same as shaving her head. Now, let me explain this. You need to read all 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 through chapter 14 is the best picture we get in the New Testament of what a church service should look like. The problem with it is, it's talking to the church at Corinth. And that was ghetto fabulous ministry. Let me explain why. We always run, those who come out of the Church of Christ heritage, normally runs to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 when it says women be silent in the church. If you got a question, ask your husband at home. What we don't read is context. They were still set up in synagogue worship. The women sat in the back, the men sat in the front. So during church, while they were reading Paul's letter, the women would scream up to the front to their husbands. What does that mean? If you got 10 women screaming up to their husbands all at once, you're going to have confusion. That's why the next verse says God is not the author of confusion. He said, if you got a question, ask your husband at home. Now, if you tell women to be silent, I got a question for you. Can they sing? And if they can sing, let me ask the next question. If they don't have a husband, who do they ask? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 5, shows us that women had a big role in the movement of the church. Let me just be honest with you. They had a major role. They were praying openly and prophesying openly. And let me explain what I mean by the hair stuff. Right next to the church at Corinth, there was a temple of Diana. It was a sex prostitution place. And the way you knew the prostitutes worshipped there was that the women would shave their heads and the men would let their hair grow. Paul simply says, because y'all's church is so close to this temple, Women don't cut your hair, and men don't. Uh, uh, women, uh, men don't let your hair grow. Women don't cut your hair so that you don't look like. He's not telling them not to say anything. Sometimes that's our ma masculinity default. That when you're not a real man, you try to suffer women. Hey, Y'all not gonna pray with me for a while. So actually you see, in fact, in Romans, you see this woman by the name of Phoebe who the Bible says was a deaconess. It simply means a servant because of her gifts to the body of Christ. 
And I know this is tough for some of us that come out of different heritage, but you got to read the Bible and not read verses. Verses will get you in trouble because I argued this at a debate one time with somebody and I said, well, do you teach your women at church uh, to not cut their hair? I said, how are you going to teach one of it but not all of it? If you say she can't talk, then you also see what the text said, don't cut her hair. You need to have every woman at your church with hair down. What does the Bible say about women praying audibly in church? So the Bible shows example of women doing it. Amen. Here's the last question, and I'm gonna, this is going to take me one second. Why is dating, having sex, or living together before marriage so frowned upon? How are you supposed to know if you could be with that person avoiding anything sinful? Man, that's a good question. Y'all giggling, but that's a good question. Because what they're simply saying, how do I know I want to be with them if I haven't test driven the car? Okay. If you can't handle it, close your ears. Some of us, that's the only test driving we're doing. So as you're dating, you know that person sexually. You don't know anything else. So when you get married, if that's all you know about them, what happens when that is not number one on your priority? And you got little babies running around, and the last thing y'all thinking about. So what we do is a lot of times that's our recipe for finding out if we like somebody is how good they are. You are not worried about if they can keep the lights on. You worried about what they can do when the lights are. Okay, y'all not going to help me here. And here's, let me say this, and I'm going to let you go. God is not trying to keep us from having fun. God knows us. So if you do it before you get married, and the one who's called for you and made for you is not as good as the ones you've had previously. You will spend the rest of your life comparing their inability to her ability. So you'll find yourself in some jacked up drama because she or he can do that. But he or she can't let you sleep at night. Y'all not going to help me here? Y'all real shaky right now. Y'all, there's some folks married to somebody because you tried it. And now that's not on your priority. And now your relationship is miserable. So Paul says in Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 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 yeah, 7, in verse number 9, it says, if you can't control yourself, it's better to marry than to burn. Now let me say this to you. For those of you who choose to live together before you get married. What benefit, I'm just going to talk to my sisters. What benefit does he have to do what Beyonce said? Put a ring on it. When you're f providing a marital position without the responsibility. And you'll really find out what you got if you stop it and if he stops calling you because you stopped it you knew you didn't have anything anyway okay y'all y'all can sit there and act all so did it all day long but many of us get into bad situations because of it and sometimes we got to pray our way through and ask God to bless us so the Bible don't give me a direct answer to this but common sense said, if that's all you get together for, then you really don't have a relationship. You got to meet it. Somewhere along the way, you got to say, I want God to do better. I want God to reveal to me. And I want God to open up doors for me. But what are you doing over here so that the blessings of heaven? Now, I know for many of you this is uncomfortable talk, but this is real church. We want our kids and our teenagers to hear it in here before they get it out there. And we want to let them know mistakes we've all made that we're trying to fix. Amen, somebody, that we're asking God to deliver us from. So 
talk, have that open conversation, be honest, be transparent. And guess what? Your children, your children's children can do better than you did. Because you can say, this is what daddy did wrong, this is what mama did wrong, but you got a chance to start over. And if you're in one of those relationships, like this sister brought, dragged her man to me at 8 o'clock service, and said, now say that again. Let me say, you can. I said, sister, this ain't a good time. You know, <laughs> brother man sitting there, looked like he was about to bust a move on me. Yeah. Uh, I said, but if you're in a relationship, I ain't saying getting out of the race relationship. I said, stop that. So you can get to know him. Because you don't know them when that's all you're doing. Get to know how they think. Do you know their credit score? Do you know how long they've been on that job? I mean, pop up with, with lunch. Make sure you ain't dating Tommy. You ain't got no job. I mean... Y'all not going to help me here. Y'all don't watch Martin. I mean, come on. Let's be real and common sense. And let me tell you what the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit will let you know if she's the one. The Holy Spirit will let you know if he's the one. Because even a family will try to tell you. Y'all not going to pray. Why y'all fake, man? This is hard. I'm going to try this next week. Grandmama say, girl. I wouldn't deal with her. She is out there. I wouldn't deal with him for a second. You No, no, but I love it. No, you love that. But one day, like the Bible says, it will fade. And all you're trying to do is get you a sleep number. And get eight hours. Which the bed elevated so your indigestion. Y'all not gonna help me here. <laughs> come on, that's real talk. So, hey, I hope that blessed somebody. Whoever asked the question, don't come to me and tell me who it was. But I think that's, I'm glad you asked me and not asked somebody who said, You both are dubs. Go do what you wanna do. No, do what God said, and God will bless it and honor. Amen. All right, praise God. Praise God. All right, all right. It's prayer time. We're gonna ask God to bless you and ask God to direct you if you want to know more about what the Holy Spirit is doing, what God is trying to do in your life, what, uh, how God is working and shifting your life, this is your time to get it straight. This is your time to open up your life to Jesus Christ. As our leaders and their wives come, we want to be here to minister to you. Brother Mars and his team will be, uh, and Sister Knight and her team will be over to our left. If you wanted to know more about Jesus Christ with the Next Steps program, we just want to be here for you to minister to you and keep you in prayer as we all are trying to figure this thing out, as we all are struggling.